It's a nice tie choice, too. Like that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Congressman Wilson, Governor McMaster, Senator Graham, Senator Scott, and my Congressman, Senator Jeff Duncan. I've always considered myself a Jeff Duncan conservative. One thing that the chairman did not mention is I'm a registered pharmacist. So what you have before you is a drug dealer and a politician. Some will say that you are the grassroots of our liberties. I would say you as conservative activists are the bedrock of our liberties and I want to thank you for your involvement. Thank you so much. I, be I began just like you as a party activist and I became party chairman and then I was elected to the South Carolina Senate and I served uh, for 12 years and I want to take this moment and thank Anderson County for nominating Richard Cash. <laughs> Richard's going to be great and I do want to thank Richard for all of us for his, uh, his service in the personhood legislation. He's done great with that. As my time in the Senate, I had one simple philosophy, to promote your liberty and to protect your wallet. And as your Lieutenant Governor, I have the same commitment to promote your liberty and to protect your wallet. Conservatism, in my view, is that government is a dangerous tool and should only be used at last resort and should never be used to replace God or family or common sense. And government should be kept as close to the local level as possible to be held accountable to you, the taxpayer. Conservatism, whether it be uh, fiscal or social, I consider all of them moral issues. Whether we're talking about taxes or school choice, or regulating barbershops, I look at every issue through the same lens as how does this policy impact your God-given liberties and your right to live your lives with the resources that God has blessed you with. When the penny didn't fix education, when the cigarette tax didn't fix Medicaid, this gas tax will not fix your roads. That, fellow Republicans, is a moral failing of government. When hospitals can't expand without getting permission from a government agency, when someone has to take 1,500 hours of class time, get this, 1,500 hours of class time to legally wash your hair, when a retail establishment, true story, a restaurant in Anderson was fined for, you know what? His refrigerator was too cold. That is a moral failing of government. When our youngest citizens, when their lives are treated less important than ours, the unborn, when they can't fight back for themselves, that is the ultimate moral failing of government. As you know, as we saw with Senator Graham, conservatism is under assault, and we often find ourselves in the minority, and we're constantly under fire. And you're familiar with those fights, the constant assault on the unborn, the hyper-regulation of our lives and our businesses, and some of those memorable fights that I remember in the Senate was when we 
gave the unborn child 24 hours, just 24 more hours of life that the mother might reconsider. And we had obviously some help from above because we had some pro-choice senators vote with us. When we had Jessica Law before the Senate, I introduced an amendment to put child rapists on death row. And I had a filibuster. I had to filibuster several hours just to get to a vote, but we got it done. We had a bill that would raise the debt ceiling on our grandchildren to dredge the Port of Charleston, another filibuster. Very important project, but why, why do we need to raise the taxes, not on you, but the taxes on your grandchildren by raising the debt ceiling? We got it done and we found cash on hand to, to save putting you into $300 million of debt. I have, as a pharmacist, I have identified four drugs, Zyprexa, Seroquel, Abilify, and Risperdal. Those four drugs alone we were spending over $34 million for, and we found a way to save that money. During last year and this year, we witnessed Senator Tom Davis's constant filibuster on this awful piece of legislation they call the Rhodes Bill. Thank you, Tom. Senator Davis, he exposed the cronyism, the waste, and the mismanagement of our Department of Transportation's agencies. We've recently learned that the Department of Transportation, the DOT's budget, has more than doubled in the last couple of years. We're over, over $2 billion. But the propaganda pumps continue to spew the only way to fix your roads is to, raise your, is to raise your taxes. Well, let me tell you how we fix those roads. Put the DOT in a cabinet agency under the governor and hands off your wallet. I ask you to continue supporting the cause of conservatism. Please keep trying to send conservatives to Columbia. And I tell you what we can do, let's send a conservative to Washington. Let's send Ralph Norman to Washington. With that same view of promoting your liberty and protecting your wallet. One of the greatest men to ever live, Sir Winston Churchill said, Never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never give in. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. The left certainly has not given in. And I ask you to not give in. Do not let the media... Do not let the politicians, some so-called Republicans, do not let the establishment, do not let the elite in the colleges, do not let anyone ever shame you for standing up for America and standing up for your liberties. God gave them to you. Do not let government take them away. Thank you again. God bless South Carolina and God bless America.